Hi everyone. So if you're following me for some time, you know that I purchased a Mac mini with 8GB RAM and sold it. So first I was having some Bluetooth issues, but those were fixed after some updates. But then I started to reach that 8GB limit while video editing and most of my professional softwares were not working on that. So I ended up selling it and rather than upgrading to 16 GB RAM, I thought why not wait for the new Macs like that come with um, M1X or M2 chip. Uh, I also waited for WWDC but nothing on announced and I know a lot of you are doing the same but then I realized I, I really don't have any expectation from Apple to release a new Mac mini anytime soon. Another reason I sold my Mac Mini because of the virtualization support. Many of you know that I'm a software developer or a particular term DevOps. So virtualization is very important for my workflow. So I need to work with virtual machine and Docker. Uh, virtual machine still does not work, but Docker is working much better now. So I won't go into much details, but if you know about ARM and Intel images, so Intel images were not working before, but now with the workaround, you can work with Intel images on the stalker. Now the third reason of selling my Mac mini was the multiple device connectivity. It was not an issue with Mac mini itself, but I was using MacBook Pro because I still have to use it for virtual machine. So switching between those devices were not easy. So if you're using a Magic Keyboard and Apple Magic Mouse, you cannot connect to multiple devices. Uh, but now with Mac OS 12, you get the universal control with that. You will be able to connect to multiple devices, just like Logitech Flow. I tried Logitech Flow, but it does not work for me very well. And the update of Mac OS 12 is around the corner so I think that was another good reason so now I can at least connect uh, my MacBook Pro if I want to or otherwise I can just connect my iPad Pro with just one mouse so there are multiple reasons I wanted to switch to M1 Mac mini but one of the main reason I switched to M1 because of the video editing performance so my current MacBook Pro is uh, i5 2.3 gigahertz quad core 16 GB RAM but it can barely handle a 4k video with 8-bit and I work on best performance mode I cannot even work in best quality mode and I have to turn off the background render just to work with this machine. Uh, but recently I purchased the Sony a7S3 which I'm recording right now and it supports 422 10-bit and this machine dies. Like my MacBook Pro cannot handle normal 30 frames per second video. But if I want to go with 4K60 or 4K120 with that high efficiency H265, my machine cannot even do anything like it just shows me circle or there's just a lot of frame drops but surprisingly this m1 despite being so cheap machine like works really well with this a7s3 footage so there's nothing in the market right now that can perform this well at this price with sony a7s3 footage or even if you want to go with 8k raw or something like that uh, so the 16 gb ram version because i upgrade to 16 gb ram works beautifully with a7s3 so for the video editing alone is just a gift I did not want to purchase another MacBook Pro as I already have one from my office so it doesn't make sense to have another laptop. So my main preference was Mac mini and uh, I was not expecting Apple to announce another Mac mini anytime soon because you know Apple love to crush our dreams. So uh, if I wait for another event and if Mac mini does not get announced, I mean all that time for waiting for a little bit higher processing power or more RAM is just going to go into waste. So I rather purchased what we have right now. I really don't have to show you benchmarks right now because this machine is out for a long time and you know how powerful it is. And this time I went with a 16 GB RAM. All the issues I was facing uh, while video editing or doing something else together are just gone. So it works really well. And the 16 GB RAM is like uh, I'm always using around 12 to 14 GB at max. So it never reached that limit and I didn't see the swap usage as of now. So I think the 16 GB RAM is really good. So if you're planning to get this machine, I would definitely recommend go with 16 GB RAM. So I actually uh, purchased 8 GB because every other YouTuber is going to show you that uh, it works nice. You can edit the footage, you can export really fast that all of that is true. But when you're working with multiple timelines and um, if you are just working on a bigger project, uh, this machine hangs like anything. So you can work anything else, but the, there will be audio dropouts because that 8 GB RAM limit hits really soon because you're just using the same CPU and same GPU. It's a shared memory because of M1 works like that. I know Apple is going to release a new chip and I'm definitely going to be faster than this and there will be more RAM option. And if you're actually planning to go or buy a MacBook and two USB port are not enough for you, I will definitely recommend you to wait. But the ports on M1 Mac Mini are enough for me. Yes, I would love to have two more USB-C ports, but I think I can deal with it. 
it's not a perfect machine definitely not and there are a lot of issues with it that still exist uh, like the bluetooth issues and they are uh, the issues that are i think initially from the mac mini the older generation as well so it's not just with m1 mac mini and it also has wi-fi 6 but the signal strength is really weak uh, it's not as great as my macbook pro uh, so i usually get around 150 or 200 mbps inside as my router is outside but with this machine i'm usually getting uh, 40 50 mbps at max so that's one issue with it Another issue with this M1 Mac Mini is the external SSD speed. So if you have that Thunderbolt 3 drive like uh, Samsung T5 or T7, I use T5, you will notice this difference. So it's actually slower than my Intel Mac. So you get around 540 Mbps read or write on my Intel Mac. But with this machine, I get around 360 or 370 Mbps. It still works perfectly fine for my video editing, but this is something I need you to know. So if you want to work with the higher speed, you need to get that Thunderbolt um, hub. So that can convert that USB four to normal thunderbolt three although it supports thunderbolt three but i don't know why you don't get the same speed as the normal intel max so yeah i think that's it uh, this was the main reason i got this machine i am really happy with it i am just going to use it as a video editing uh, machine i seriously cannot find a single machine in this price that can actually handle a video like this and i have started working slowly on docker as well so that's worked fine otherwise this machine is actually really fast you know m1 is really fast and uh, after updates, it has get gotten better. So the last time I used it and now I'm using it, actually it's working really good. So if you're planning to go with M1 Mac Mini, I would definitely recommend this machine. It works pretty well, but just understand if you're using a lot of third-party plugins and you still are dependent upon virtualization and virtual machine, I would recommend wait for some time because it's still not there yet. But if you have a normal productivity or creativity workflow, I think this machine is going to work perfectly fine for you. So if you are in US, you're already getting the discount on Mac mini. And if you are in India, you can use your student account or you can just arrange a student account and get this machine at a discount. So for the 16 GB RAM machine, you can get it for 76,000 something. And you also get airports free with that. So if you have any question about this M1 Mac mini, please ask in the comment box. My name is Rohit. I'll see you in the next one. Till then.